Hello, I'm narrating this after the fact, but we are doing an accelerated progression guide. Uh, I am going switching to Chaos Difficulty, Ancient Chaos Shrine, Light of Possibility. And while this is loading, uh, we are going to try to go through Chaos Difficulty and Bahamut Difficulty at an accelerated rate, but not speedrunner fast, just accelerated. So this first fight, you cannot game over. You also cannot use extra mode. And even though my item levels are 85 below what they could be, that's fine because again, we, we really can't game over. And the fight wants you to be somewhere between level 30 on an expert job or 55 on a basic or an advanced job with item level 191 or higher. But again, I don't, I'm not doing any of that. I am just abusing Berserker and because that's the job I used when I beat the game on this save and uh, the fight is over. But again, you cannot game over on this fight. So I'm trying to skip the little stuff. Did I mention I'm narrating this after the fact? So there's gonna be things that I want to talk about that I just don't have time to fit into this video without having to edit the video. Anywho, the dragon cave unlocked. I went into the dragon cave and there is no fight here on this mission. It's just a matter of how quickly you can get from this door to the other door and maybe admire the artwork of the, the room nearby. I have my settings down pretty low, so anywho, uh, you talk with the NPC and I try to skip said NPC pretty quickly. And what you end up doing is unlocking Bahamut difficulty. So you are now done with, not entirely, you are now done with chaos difficulty, depending on your job. Uh, so I'm switching the chaos, I'm sorry, Bahamut difficulty, where you're supposed to get dragon treasures. Now, to get those dragon treasures for progression purposes, I am going to the sunken shrine, Azure Memories, the rebel. I'm unlocking the four, mission level 400 version of that. I'm also getting a lot of prompts because I haven't done stuff. But now for the Bahamut trials, just for this mission, I am turning up almost everything except for buff duration, max MP boost uh, and recovery. And I also didn't turn on the uh, command ability cost. And temporarily, I am switching to the basic mage job and the ninja job. So that when I go in, Mage will allow me to push the enemy off at the end. And Ninja gives me Utsemi, which is a Nijutsu on the three o'clock position. It lets you evade or survive up to three hits. So I'm using that right away and uh, just kind of showing it's on the three o'clock position. Um, you don't have to use it twice. But sort of notice that I am a very low level ninja and mage and it doesn't matter for this mission because I'm well now I'm casting flea and I'm trying to run by everything unfortunately if I recall I think I actually die because I try to do something that I don't normally do later but we're ultimately running and hugging this left wall and there's a ladder on the right do not go up that ladder that is a waste of time well, it doesn't have the real voice. But now we're running all the way down to the end of the hall and getting on this ladder and just jumping, or not jumping, but dodge in order to just jump off. And if you did get hit, to uh, reapply Utsemi before going down. Uh, but we'll say grab the chest for the key card, and depending on how swift or, uh, you move, try to open either the door or just climb back up the ladder that you're used to climbing. I'm not used to the bottom, but that you just came down. Now in this case, I really screwed up and I died. So I have more time to talk about other crap. Let's go. We're doing this for one, to get the first time rewards. And I probably should have mentioned this sooner, but if you are co-oping, that each player Let's unlock go. this mission before joining the lobby so that you each get credit for the first time rewards. Um, the two missions before this, they were solo only. This one you can do together or with uh, three, three people play together to do that. But in this case, I, I grabbed, I have the key card already. So instead of going down the ladder, I can now run over to the pool and try to admire Jack's butt 
and climb up this ladder. You don't have to admire his butt, but know that it is very strong. Anywho, I'm using the cubes because I lost some max MP. And I'm sorry, I lost some MP. And I'm going to go over here and try to push these enemies off the ledge with Aroga. Um, so switching over to Mage, trying to get close enough and just start Final casting Aroga. And uh, notice that my MP is starting to come back while holding the cast button. And so sometimes you'll need three casts to kind of push everything off, but you can do so from a safe distance. Uh, I do see a lot of players using the spear and wild thrust to trying to get up all in the enemy's face for some reason. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can cast from a safe distance with unlimited MP given time and just push them off reliably. Anywho, we got a lot of anima crystals, and we even got some dragon treasures. Not enough for anything useful, uh, except for limit releases, but I'm going to Hollowed Massif, Azure of Memories, the Stymied, and I am unlocking the level 400 version of that. I am turning down trials that affect my break damage, the enemy stats, as well as negate all armor effects, because that will drag this fight out longer. Now, I am buying eight marksman limit releases but you can also buy uh, i would say at this point whatever job that you want buy those limit releases at that point too like just pick two other jobs that you really like now in this case i picked marksman i am unlocking all of the marksman nodes because the gunman soul this one right here restores mp with magic damage dealt that's going to be very important I also got my marksman up to level uh, 47 at least so that the marksman job affinity, that 330%, that is super important because now when I switch to marksman, I now have access to, no matter what gun I have, I have access to gunmaster and that gives me access to uh, starlight. So on that while aiming one starlight, that restores MP based on magic damage dealt Starlight is continuous magic damage dealt. So as long as the enemy doesn't move, <laughs> uh, then we get to destroy them. And that is the hope. So I'm going into the stymied. Uh, if you don't have this mission unlocked, you, uh, you'll have, you will have to look it up and, and try to just unlock that mission. You don't have to look it up. But I am running around making a giant U-shape. I did use the ninja's utsemi right at the beginning, just in case I do get hit. And uh, I am just so scared at this point that I didn't use Flea yet. And uh, so feel free, whatever you think that you can do to make this faster, do that. I don't have the speedrunner tactic of like running and dodging and continuing to keep that speed. I, I, let me focus. So this next thing, I am about to open the door and get close enough to this Malboro, aim. This is holding normal attack. I'm sorry, not aim, aiming. And then I'm using the starlight. Um, so hold normal attack and then hold down your special attack button or your job action button or whatever your combo ability button is. And then now you can soul burst this creature and you'll have some loot that's somewhere between item level 390 and 400. Even though that wasn't, um, th this place lets you get at least your item level up. And if you kind of want to have some gear to just settle into, I'd say do this mission about uh, two more times. Now, in my case, I'm too impatient to do that. So I am just going to find the gear that lets me get my item level up. And as long as my item level is... 371 or higher in this case it won't be because I, I don't think I got enough pieces but 371 or higher uh, you're good to go uh, but if you just want to do story and uh, I am mass dismantling everything because on this playthrough I rushed through everything so I don't have crap to actually um, to really smith but specific to what I'm showing in the video I am just impatient uh, impatiently impatiently uh going through and applying intellect on all my gear for the marksman build that i'm showing for the rest of this video which is just me using starlight to punish enemies with magic damage and intellect your raw scats playing uh one of the biggest roles in your ability to defeat the enemy 
So uh, I am changing all of the gear that I have equipped on my marksman. I filtered it uh, so that only the stuff that Jack is wearing. And applying intellect on every piece, and I'm going to try to upgrade each piece. And uh, again, this will check... Not again, I'm sorry. Your build, depending on what you're going for, this step will change. And that's where the Google document comes into play of just sort of just reading a, a less rushed version of this. Because I am rushing, because I'm trying to narrate within 20 minutes or however long this video is, because I'm not going to be pausing it. But I am upgrading all the intellect on all my pieces so that my starlight does even more damage. And if I were really going... Oh, also I'm turning off my dragon trials at some point. But uh, just to kind of show you how many conversations we unlocked. And this part does take a while. So maybe I'll talk about the builds while we're at it. Um, there is a Google Doc that just has a bit of this video in text formats. And then there is a video with about eight different builds that were minimal to low, uh, minimal to no RNG and how they performed, how much they can get hit. Uh, the other big thing is I'm using marksman here, but let's say that you're not using marksman after that stymied run and you want to focus now on the jobs that you really want to play. Now you can, and you would go back to chaos difficulty you know. to get your limit releases so that you can increase and invest in more raw stats, increase your level cap. Pardon me. I don't and then any item level, any gear you have that's average item level one, I'm sorry, 371 or higher, you go and use the smithy on that. And uh, if you can't change stuff on the smithy, you'll have to complete the, the Refren Wetlands side mission and the Mount Gulg side mission that have the, the three Master Tonberries. But just as an example, we did two missions and we got almost all the conversations with Bahamut. So there's that one reviewer that mentioned that this took too long and this is just an example of if you kind of know what you're doing, this doesn't need to take anywhere as long as they had mentioned. Um, so all the conversations are done, and uh, this 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 was just fast. Anywho, uh, what I am doing is, in general, I am unlocking at least one mission first with my anima crystals before spending my anima crystals. So always unlock the next mission first so that you can get the first time rewards for that mission. Now in this case, I am just dumping and trying to finish my marksman out. You don't have to do this unless you were literally going to specialize in marksman using starlight. Uh, this is me trying to like prioritize the main stat first and now I'm going for my different break damage related stats. And I'm trying to figure out which one of these stats might help me the most, but I'm like, eh, I'm not really sure. So I'm just like, I know I have unspent points and I decided to just say, eh, forget it. Uh, now I'm also thinking because I'm marksman or using the gun that I absolutely want to get access to the teleport ability or command ability from Sage. So this is me trying to get that Sage uh, unlocked and I'm just kind of trying to speed through and get at least that command ability um, but yeah so when I tell someone or advise don't grind on the first playthrough for a job that you don't plan on playing for a while it's because you get so many anima crystals that you can catch it up to level 30 here to get all your unlocks I just got teleport so that's gonna help me out on this next mission also when you're going to do the remaining Bahamut missions just whatever to turn off your dragon trials uh, just briefly now specific to this video I am using marksman ninja I'm using Utsemi and this first round I'm just going to starlight the crap out of him uh, and hope that he dies before there's a chance for him to actually like think about what's going on so at, it might not be maybe the most efficient and it could have been a lot faster but it's fine I am now shooting uh, to get 
my buffs up and just sort of getting ready for this next round. Reapplying Utsemi. I also noticed that I chose the mission level 250 version because all I want is the, the, the completion. I don't actually want to, I don't have a fully realized or even half of a build to uh, challenge Bahamut. But at this point, I'm just starlighting him right in the groin and making him regret for just trying to even do what he did to me and I just kick him in the corner and all this other good stuff. Grab some loot, um nom 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 nom, very good. And uh, wondering what these flags here are doing, what these flags are doing here from Wulong. Wulong? Uh, but yeah, anywho, I got a rat tail and I just unlocked, notice how the camera panned down to Ancient Chaos Shrine. This is the second Chaos Shrine, Ancient Chaos Shrine mission. So whenever you unlock a new story mission, the camera will pan over to it and it'll highlight it with like this gold rectangle. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of us tend to be doing something else or ready to do something else. And so we miss that highlight and it seems like the game's not telling us where to go. And then we go and do that internet search and can't find anything. And really it was just the reason it's not documented is because the game assumes that the player noticed that transition and that unlock message. Uh, but now I have a chance to choose uh, a, a job, uh, a class I just unlocked at the rat tail. Uh, I'm looking at my gear and I'm like, eh, I'm trying to find something that has higher stats and just a higher item level so that I don't get the penalty. The gun I found, oh, hey, I have a higher ranking gun. And now I'm just going to customize that with intellect. Am I talking too much? I'm annoyed at myself, but it's okay. We're just going to keep going. And so I'm applying intellect on all the pieces because it is the good and it feels good. But what I really should do is make sure that everything has like intellect and for my specific build, break damage dealt. Um, but if you do want to survive taking a hit traditionally, you want to have stamina and spirit across your gear and or the some type of damage taken that you can consistently take advantage of. But the, uh, just also make sure that you have your main attack stat, whatever that might be. For me, it happens to be intellect because I'm using magic damage. Uh, for physical, that could have been strength. For physical damage, <laughs> yeah, that's what I said, I guess. Uh, if you're critical hitting, agility. Otherwise, you can use combo abilities and job actions that have your stat bonus. Now, in this case, I'm going to just try to go into this fight and hopefully not get completely clobbered because uh, I did die earlier in a video, uh, but trying to absorb those, um, what's, what's that thing called? Radiant Slash because that allows you to dispel buffs that he has. But uh, I wanted to get the teleport up first with this particular build. I'm still aiming with Starlight, using Utsemi to kind of avoid stuff. And uh, we're gonna be treated with a little cutscene that I'm gonna try to skip ASAP and hope that I don't completely die. I do have teleport up. And um, I am using that Radiant Slash because I thought maybe that would uh, stall him just a bit. And I'm sort of panicking here because I don't think he's going to stay put. But I'm I'm kind of forgetting how to play with the gun. And I'm hoping that he goes more vertical, uh, uh, like straight towards me. I'm trying to just keep my distance from him. And he's keeping his distance from me. And at this point, he is down. And I pull his hair and he doesn't like it. He goes, go away, get away from me. And I'm like, no, I want to pet you. And then I just stab him in the stomach. And then he goes and turns into rupees. And then I go and hide them in different pots so that Link can find them and go do 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 later. But it's okay. Anywho, the battle's over and we have finished the first DLC. So, Chaos Difficulty, Bahamut Difficulty, it's done. Now, I'm not doing this for the whole, all three DLCs, but just sort of the idea to get you started. By the end of this, you should hopefully have been uh, job level 200, item level 371 plus fully smithed and ready to take on the second DLC. Maybe, maybe not, but I hope that helps voice version of this. Take care.